Hello everybody. Um, my name is Rob Christenthwaite. Uh, I'm an MRS student here at SAMS. Uh, I'm supervised by Professor Michelle Stanley and Dr. Valeria Montalesco. Uh, and my project is establishing land tank cultivation of Asparagopsis species in Scotland. So Asparagopsis taxiformis is a red filamentous algae. Um, it's got a heteromorphic diplopathic lifestyle, which means it's complicated. Um, it's native to the Indo-Pacific region um, and it's distributed globally in tropical and temperate waters. Um, it's comprised of six cryptic lineages, which is relative to its geo distribution. I've been looking at isolated lineage number two, uh, which is often found in the Mediterranean. Um, it displays characteristics of a successful invasive species and it contains a high diversity of halogenated metabolites. And one of the key ones we're most interested in is bromoform. So what are the drivers of my project? Well, there's a relationship between Asparagopsis taxiformis and cows. Um, so ruminant livestock uh, contribute 28% of global CH4 emissions. And I think if you equate that to cows being a country that would put them fifth in the world. Um, so when uh, research trials have developed to introduce Asparagopsis into ruminant feed trials, uh, the bromoform interacts with the microbiome of the cattle and reduces their, um, the microbiome's ability to produce methane. Um, inclusion of Asparagopsis um, uh, led to methane reduction by between 40 and 98% in one trial, uh, and more trials have shown other promising results. Um, we've also shown a reduction of dry mass intake and an increase in feed conversion efficiency in the cattle. Uh, which could be an economic benefit. Also, uh, a good thing in one of these studies was no measurable, measurable bromoform or iodine residues were detected in the uh, meat. So what's been the direction of my study? Well, I've been looking to establish the baseline uh, conditions of cultivation for Asparagopsis. Uh, in my second chapter, I was looking at using the algin PBRs um, to assess the effects of light and temperature manipulation. So I used the Asparagopsis's native Naples um, region and some Staffordshire um, as an example. Um, I then, uh, in my third chapter, I looked at using a Cyclops, which is a, a larger PBR. It went up to 16 litres. And I used the most favoured conditions from the Algin trials uh, to assess it on a larger scale. Uh, in chapter four, I'll be looking at um, upscaling of production. Um, it's important that we create enough biomass, but also balance that out with the amount of bromoform that we produce. Um, so how to ensure successful cultivation and optimize biomass slash bromoform production. So just looking at some of my results um, from my second chapter, um, in the native Naples conditions, um, the Biomass rocketed up uh, by 121% in 21 days, whereas Scotland sadly lagged behind at 31%. Um, I analyzed carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, ash, uh, iodine, and bromoform content in the biomass. Um, found that there's a possible link between uh, the greater biomass output and the reduced iodine content, which may make it more suitable for uh, Production for cattle feed as we don't want iodine in meat or dairy products. Um, the iodine and bromoform were analyzed using the uh, high performance anion exchange chromatography system and uh, the gas chromatography mass spectrometer system. Um, and hopefully, you've all seen today that in the in BioLab One, uh, the new CCAP Aries is being trialed to develop biomass. Um, that'll be the little red pom-poms that were flying about. I hope everyone enjoyed seeing those. So yeah, uh, discussion points for future research. Well, the six different lineages call, could all behave differently. We don't know yet. Um, I've only been looking at one in my case. So it'd be nice to look at the biochemistry of the different lineages in various conditions in the PBRs. Uh, we'd like to improve an understanding of the link between culture conditions and uh, the bromoform and iodine content of the biomass. Um, we need to improve on uh, a system to observe bromoform content in the biomass as well, 
Um, obviously, that's the key compound that we want to interact with the cow's microbiome. Um, and understanding optimum growth conditions of the different lineages as well. Uh, there's a couple of questions which seemingly are unanswered in literature so far about asparagopsis. Um, what is the sexual orientation? Um, no one seems to have completely nailed that, which seems like something we should do. Um, and understanding which of the two main life stages are more beneficial to growth. Um, whether that be the sporophyte or the gametophyte, at the moment it seems the sporophyte is more heavily favoured, but that could change. Um, and we'd like to develop an understanding of the relationship between all the halogenated metabolites, uh, which could be a lot, um, in the algae biomass and its effect on the microbiome within the cattle. So yeah, that's the sparagopsis in Scotland. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone who's helped me out Big or small, um, yeah, everyone's been brilliant at sound, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Questions, if possible. Hello, sorry, me again. Um, obviously, people previously have mentioned um, the interaction between bacteria and seaweeds. Um, and I just wondered whether there'd been any consideration about looking at that um, as perhaps the next step with this project, given obviously the in, in potential impact on the microbiome in the cow <laughs> and what impact that might have. Uh, yeah, um, well, that was something hopefully to do. Um, uh, yeah, uh, it was, was going to be a part of the research um suddenly just time constraints um have, we almost got there just needed another well, just another month to do but yeah it would have involved sending stuff to germany uh to get processed and with current events going on around the world that's a bit of a problem sorry <laughs> So how much biomass, algal biomass, are we talking about in terms of a percentage additive to the cattle feed? Uh, so some of the studies have been as low as 0.1%, 0.2% of the feed, and that's been shown a clear benefit in reducing uh, methane output. Um, it's not the biomass that we want, it's the bromoform. Um, Still trying to figure that out. Um, a lot of a lot of um, studies have been on wild harvested stuff, which obviously creates a problem with uh, iodine uh, buildup over time. So, so aim is to extract. Sure. It wouldn't be to extract it. No, it'd just be you know it was there and in what quantity. And um, obviously, that's an expensive process when you're using a GCMS as well. So you can't do it every single time. So you want to know roughly how much there is every so often so if there's some there it should have an effect um yeah so quality control is yeah that's it challenge yeah. do you know what the price is per kilo of dried products uh, uh, no no there's the, do you think there is a, even a market for at the moment that's real? I guess is it still discovery phase, really? Or? Yeah, I think it's mainly a discovery phase. If you look at the companies, are uh, the companies who are producing it are producing either or trying to do wild harvesting or they're doing um, tiger cultivation right by uh, ocean, you know, ocean resources. Um, they're very secretive. You yeah, can't imagine why. I did ask so, some of them actually. Yeah, they wouldn't tell me. No, uh, they won't tell me either. So yeah. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I don't know. But I imagine initially it'll be a lot, um, and if they can produce more, cost will go down if the benefit can be seen. So yeah. Thanks. Robbie, thank you very much. It's great. Thank you.